Professor Dave and Chegg here, we know a bit about the properties of ethers. So now it's time to learn about some reactions they can undergo. And a very common type of reaction for ethers is acidic cleavage. Let's learn more about this now. We know that ethers involve an oxygen atom bound to two alkyl groups of some kind. Because they are not especially reactive, they are commonly used as solvents. But the oxygen is still capable of acting as a Bronsted-Lowry base, just like it does in water or alcohols, given the two lone pairs. So this opens up an opportunity to do some chemistry. Take for example ethyl phenyl ether. If we react with something like hydrobromic acid, the oxygen will certainly be protonated, given how strong the acid is. But this leaves a bromide ion in solution, which is a reasonable nucleophile, and we have generated an electrophilic site on the starting material. A nucleophile is unable to attack the carbon on the benzene ring since it's an sp2 center, but it is able to attack the carbon in the ethyl group that is adjacent to the oxygen. If the bromide ion attacks this position, it can kick off phenol in a simple SN2 reaction, and the positive charge on the oxygen is neutralized. So we end up with phenol and bromoethane, and the ether has been successfully cleaved, meaning split apart. This is very simple chemistry, but there is one important thing to understand in terms of regiochemistry. In the case of ethyl phenyl ether, there was only one possibility in terms of where the bromide could attack. But if we were looking at something like ethyl isopropyl ether reacting with hydroiodic acid, we have to understand that the iodide would attack the less hindered alkyl position because there is less steric hindrance. This will yield isopropyl alcohol and iodoethane, as opposed to the other two possible products. So we must keep steric factors in mind when determining how an ether might cleave. Additionally, this will not always occur via an SN2 mechanism. If a carbocation intermediate is favorable due to sufficient substitution on the alkyl groups, like tert-butyl groups, an SN1 pathway is also possible. In such a situation, E1 is also possible. It will simply depend on the precise starting material and conditions like temperature. With that, we have an understanding of one of the types of reactions ethers can undergo, which is simple cleavage promoted by a strong acid whose conjugate base is capable of acting as a nucleophile. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.